Hello, my saucy friend. Uh, I'm in uh, Keran right now. I left uh, the camping uh, one and a half hour ago uh, in uh, Sarian, and uh, I uh, so drove up to uh, Keran, which is like 22 uh, kilometers. I thought it would be easy, but uh, there's a wind in this region called Mistral, and I got it all the way long. And even if the road uh, were flat, I was like feeling like uh, I was climbing uh, the Alpe d'Huez. I mean, uh, <laughs> I was uh, epic. Okay, now we are in the um, uh, cellar with uh, with Margot, uh, who is in charge, and. Uh, Today we will uh, try uh, so the range of uh, Richo wines together with her. Maybe you can introduce uh, us uh, about the estate and uh, what is special about it. Yeah, sure. So, um, Domaine Richo has been created by Marcel in the 70s. Um, so, um, it started to work in the family fields. And little by, li by little, uh, during the years, um, uh, the domain become bigger. Yeah. And so actually we have uh, more than 70 hectares uh, for the production. Oh, it's great. Yeah. Um, so um, uh, we work in an organic way since more than 20 years. So in the field, everything is handmade. The harvest, um, I mean, even um, for the um, desherbage. Okay, yeah. Um, so we only use mechanical way, and we are only gonna use um, a tree product for the um, sickness treatment of the beans, uh, which are the soufre, the cuivre, and the bouillie bordelaise. That's okay. it. So sulfites, copper, and the bouillie bordelaise. It is it, not with sulfites as well. It's a mix between both. Ah, it's a mix yeah. between both. Yeah. Okay. Um, so um, in the beginning of the 90s, uh, Marcel met an analogue, Ian Rouel, um, who made him discover um, the natural vinification, because it was really the beginning for, for this philosophy in France um, at this time. Uh, also, Marcel met uh, Marcel Lapierre in the Beaujolais, and so um, he, he was really interested um, about, about it. And he starts to work in a natural way in the end of the 90s uh, on all the, all the wine. So since this moment, uh, all, our, all the vinification are made without inputs, without filtration, um, without sulfates, and only with natural yeast. Um, as I mentioned earlier um, to my community, um, Keran uh, used to be a Côte d'Iron uh, village. Yeah. And now got his own appellation uh, yeah. since when? Since uh, 2017, officially. Okay. So actually, uh, only five years ago. So it's the newborn of the appellation of South Rhone Valley. Okay. And also, Marcel did a lot for that. Terre d'Aigle, so Côte du Rhône Vintage 2020. It's the first of our Côte du Rhône in the range. Um, and so the name of the cuvee, it's um, un clin d'oeil about the terroir. Okay. And the, the thing I want to, to say, it's even on the, uh, on the small cuvee of the estate, we really try to, um, to, I mean, the first selection of the grape is where the grapes grew up. So there is already a kind of selection parcellaire mm -hmm. on the Côte du Rhône. So um, basically this cuvée used to, we used to call it Terre d'Aigle, like the river, but we had to change after. And so we call it Terre d'Aigle, like an eagle. Um, uh, and for Marcel, it was a way to, um, to say hello to all his friends, because after the wine, his second passion is that the terroir de leg, so it's all our wine situated close to the river leg, so it's the river which crossing Keran. Um, actually, it's the historic heart of the estate because um, these beans have been planted by, by Marcel Fazer in the 50s. So actually, it's all beans, around 70 years old. Um, and so um, they are situated in a special soil because in the border of the river, um, it's a mix of clay and sand and limon. So this kind of soil has two functions. Uh, the first one is to keep um, the water. So, um, from the river, from the rain, but also from the from the hair. And the second, um, the, this kind of clay are really, really rich and nutritive, so the beans don't have to um, make grow up the roots deep in the deep ground, 
uh, the wind is going to find everything in the top of the soil. And so naturally, this kind of, of, of uh, floor is um, going to bring a lot of freshness and, and going to create really soft wine naturally. So in 2020, uh, we decided to make a blend of 70% of Grenache, 10 Syrah, 10 Mourad, and 10 Carignan. Um, about the vinification, so uh, we do quite short batting moments, so it's around 10 days in concrete tank. We don't want to try to extract, we really want to create a fresh and fruity wine. So we only going to do uh, one remontage per day. Mm -hmm. Um, and after it has been aging in concrete tank until bottling. So um, it's a wine we advise to drink it um, in the two years. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, it's a wine which is very uh, easy. I mean, the structure of the wine, the tannins are very delicate, so it fits anyway. It's, it's a wine that uh, needs to be enjoyed uh, on, his, on, on his yards. Um, doesn't have the aging potential uh, either, even if it was sulfated, uh, I would say. It's not a wine, uh, maybe with the sulfites it would last a bit longer, but... No, we, we didn't make it for that. We yeah. really made it to enjoy right now. The following wine uh, is our uh, Kiran 2020. Uh, let me do the service. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. So, yeah, the Red Keran Vintage 2020 is really the signature cuvée of the estate. Also, is the most um, rare representation of the AOC Keran. Um, so, um, the vin we use um, to do this cuvée are situated in the hillside of Keran. Um, it's all vins, around 40 years old. Um, and the average is quite low in this area. Um, depends the years, but it's between 18 to 20 hectolitres per hectare, so it's not a lot. Um, so in 2020, it's a blend of 40% Grenache, 20 Syrah, 20 Morved, 10 Carignan and 10 Cunoise. So um, actually, a lot of people don't uh, know really the Cunoise. Um, so it's a new grape variety. We start to plant a lot in the area since 15 years because uh, it's our um, joker about the global warming because um, since 10 years uh, we can see um, uh, the, the process are going fastly so the temperature is hotter and hotter each year so we have actually a lot of degrees of alcohol in our wine and unfortunately we don't have real solution about it except change uh, our grape variety. So Cunois is one of the, of the new uh, cepage we, we start to plant because um, he, he has a really slow um, maturity process and so it's going to create um, low alcohol and bring freshness to the wine. So um, it's um, not, um, don't really have a, a big important part of the cahier des charges in the appellation but we can um, do like 10, 12, 20% uh, uh, of Cunois in our blend. So for us, it's a way to turn a bit down the degrees of alcohol and um, work in the freshness uh, for the balance um, of the wine. Well, I mean, uh, you can feel uh, the, the wine, uh, okay, it's 15.5. I mean, you, you can feel it's, it's, it's in the mouth, it's, it's, it's warm, but not of, of a, it's not, let's say, uh, heat because uh, the freshness really balanced it, but, but still you have this character of a uh, very sunny, very uh, uh, generous, uh, uh, I mean, location. Uh, so yeah, I can imagine that if you don't look to add some, maybe you will lose this balance and uh, if it's yeah. getting more warmer, one more and warmer, then the one might lose this elegance, uh, which is uh, wonderful. I mean, so far is a best uh, Côte du Rhône uh, I tried uh, so far. The, I, I, I like the suavity, the elegance, the delicatesse of the tannins. I mean, this, uh, I believe, is uh, just a wonderful uh, example of uh, Côte du Rhône, and I understand why he has his own uh, appellation. I don't know if this should be the characteristic of uh, a true Keran, which has this uh, generosity, uh, elegance, uh, suavity, uh, all, all together, and uh, 
beautiful aromas on, on the nose, it's very expressive. I'm very impressed, yeah, it's uh, Yeah, it's uh, actually quite typical for Keran, because yeah. uh, um, Keran um, naturally has a um, fresher exposure, because we are, we are between the Rhone um, and also all the mountain you can see, the, so Dantel de Montmirail and the Mont Ventoux, so we are a bit in the corridor. Mm -hmm. um, so naturally, Keran is fresher, so we have maybe 4 or 5 degrees less than Rasto, Rasto which is at 5 km from here. But um, the condition, the weather is really different. Also, the wine of Keran, um, the definition is the spices in this freshness. Mm -hmm. So um, for our Red Keran Vintage 2020, um, we um, <coughs> made an aging in the wood, but you don't have the wood um, in, the, in the balance of the wine, and that's the point, that's really what we're looking for. Um, so, <coughs> we made a part in a foudre, so foudre it's a 24 hectolitre wood content, and a part have been aging in a demi mui so a demi mui it's 6 hectolitre. Mm -hmm. After, in the estate, we only use old wood, so um, they have between 10 to 12 years, so already 10 to 12 wine or so, because uh, we don't want to bring too much woody nuts actually. We really want to stay in the expression of the terroir, of the vintage and of the grape variety. We won't have the chance today to uh, try uh, this wine because it's a very uh, limited uh, stock. Uh, it's called uh, Lebroscade. It's uh, Keran now. Um, I actually tried uh, from my personal seller uh, a couple of weeks ago the 2008 uh, vintage and it was just mind-blowing. It was uh, full of uh, like plum, uh, cigar, uh, I mean it was like really special, like almost like a port, uh, like a vintage, old vintage port. Uh, and I was quite surprised um, that this one aged so well. So what is special about uh, this cubet? So um, our cuvée Les Brescades, um, so actually it's a selection parcellaire, so um, the name of the cuvée is the name uh, where the wind grew so they are all situated in the top of the hill of Keran, uh, the mountain we call the Bantabran, around uh, 33, sorry, 330 meters high. Um, so it's really old winds, the medium age is 80 years old. Um, these pebbles, um, pebbles yeah. really typical for, from, from the area, uh, but in the deep ground you have a lot of granite also and silice. Mm. And so it's gonna bring complexity and also it's really like driest soil, so it's naturally gonna concentrate it um, in the beans and also in the grape. Um, so everything is handmade in this area. Also, Marcel started to explore the biodynamic um, work in the field uh, since a few years. So we do a really small average. We are between 8 to 10 hectoliters per hectare. Uh, for the vinification, so it's really long batting, like almost one month of batting uh, during vinification. We only do pigeage. So pigeage, uh, you know, it's this yeah. fat who come to crush the the grapes during fermentation, um, and then uh, it has been aging during two years in the mimi for the whole blend. So the Ebrescat is a small production. Um, it's really a wine you can accept to keep, and and actually it's quite good to wait a little bit before drink it, because during vinification we're gonna try to extract. Um, it's a really long, long moment of aging in the wood. And so the wine gonna reveal all its potential after seven to ten years mm -hmm. after the vintage. Uh, confirm definitely. It was like such a reward to open this bottle. Uh, yes, I mean you don't have necessarily to wait uh, that long, but yeah, the potential of aging uh, for sure is up to uh, 15 years. If you understood, uh, is like yeah, the style of, of, of Marcel is really about to pick the, the grape at optimum maturity. That's why usually the wines are always very, uh, let's say, round, soft, and generous on the on, on the palate, but always with the balance, which allows the, the wine to to be perfectly uh, balanced. Um, so yeah, that was the uh, last thing. Yeah, so if uh, we have the chance to to get those wines. Uh, uh, in uh, UAE, for, for example, keep in mind that uh, you need to uh, keep them at uh, cool temperature.